Hi everyone, uh, my name is James Elliott. I'm the manager of the residential solar department at Infinite Energy. Just wanted to put a short uh, video together just to explain some of the differences between different battery technologies out there. Um, with a lot of rooftop solar going in, um, a lot of people have the expectation of being able to connect batteries and, and certainly there's a bit of a revolution coming there that battery technology benefits all. So it's, what I wanted to do was go through a few um, things today just to give a bit of background around the different technologies there and explain some of the rules that apply here under Western Power's grid guidelines as well. So um, I'll just be drawing some pictures here. So we have ourselves the Western Power grid. Here it is there. And your home connects in to this grid via what we would call the uh, AC line. Now, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not an electrical engineer, so please don't be uh, too harsh on some of the definitions here. So your home ultimately connects in to the AC line around about here, and here is your home. And you have yourself a synergy meter, of course, again, bearing that you're in WA. And the meter is ultimately counting the amount of energy that you bring in from the network into the home. And that's where you get your electricity bill from. So the way a solar system connects is on the AC side. So you have a solar inverter, which sits here, and then you have your solar panels, which sit above. Your solar panels generate DC power. Your inverter's role is to convert that into AC power so that it can then work its way into the home by the various, um, by your switchboard and such. And everything in your home is ultimately connected into your switchboard. So that energy then becomes available to your kettle, uh, air conditioning, these sorts of things. Any spare power then trickles out to the grid and that's when you get paid your 7 cent feed in tariff. So that's, in broad terms, the way it's connected. Now, the way battery connects is there's a few different types. So the most popular type out there is what we would call an AC couple. So an AC couple would connect in here. So you have your battery device, and then internal to that battery device is a small little inverter, or a little charge controller, however you want to call it. And then what that does is it feeds the battery cells that are ultimately, uh, battery energy is stored in DC power. So that's the way an AC couple battery connects. Uh, examples of AC couple batteries might be your Tesla Powerwall 2, uh, the Scenic V2, and a few of the Sonnen models as well. Quite popular out there, all great products. So ultimately what's happening is the energy is being produced by the panels in DC, going into your solar inverter. The home is always the first port of call, but any spare power will then go to charge the, uh, charge the cells um, within the battery via the small little charge controller inside. Um, so you might have a solution, uh, sorry, a situation perhaps where your uh, inverter is creating five kilowatts of power, your home is using three, and there's two that's um, heading into the, the battery itself. So that's essentially how it works. Um, the notion of connecting directly into the inverter or into the home can, can somewhat be a bit, can somewhat be a little misleading. Um, again, most batteries are, are connecting in via this AC couple. So you're always using what's left over from the home. Um, now, the other type of battery out there is what we'd call a DC coupled solution. So DC couple solution is a little different. That's when um, the way it's described is you're getting charged directly from the solar panels themselves. But you always have a, a bit of an intermediary because your DC voltages up here vary quite a lot depending on where the sun is and such. And your little battery cells, they want a steady flow of power in order to be happy. So what you have is always some sort of intermediary device and this is where your battery cell might sit. So got your battery cells inside of there and then the energy is going directly from the panels to your uh, battery 
of course, by the inverter, but you can, some people call it, you know, a DC couple that's going straight from the panels, but there's always this intermediary there just to clean up the power source. Examples of this might be um, an LG battery um, or a hybrid type battery. So your Scenic V3 or your Sonnen 9.53 hybrid as well are good examples. Um, what those, what the Scenic and the Sonnen do, the Scenic V3 and the Sonnen 9.53, is they actually encapsulate this into a single unit. So it'll be a unit that sits on the, um, sits somewhere in the home and uh, it looks like a fridge and it contains all of the componentry that's required to manage both your panels and your battery cells in a single unit. So you might say it has a DC input and a DC output. Um, then again, in that situation, uh, obviously if you were to have one of those products, you don't have an AC coupled battery, you have a DC coupled battery, so the energy then becomes available to the home and what's left over is, is exported out to the grid. Or I should say, once the battery's full, the leftover power then gets um, exported out to the grid. So that's essentially the difference between the two. Uh, battery types, they connect in different ways. Um, and they're all, they're all um, good products in their own right. There are a few things to be aware of though. So in Western Australia, we have a network operator, Western Power has a rule that if you have a single phase, so a single phase home, 1P, one phase, your maximum allowable inverter capacity is five kilowatts. So at no point in time are you allowed to send more than five kilowatts down this AC line, be it for the purposes of charging a, uh, sorry, uh, covering the loads within a home, be it for the purposes of charging a battery, electric vehicle, whatever you can fathom, the maximum energy you're allowed to export um, out of your inverter onto the AC line, ultimately out to the grid, is five kilowatts. So, and West, yeah, there's a few, there's a few reasons behind that. We won't get into that today, um, but that's one of the rules to be considered of. So, one of the things is then with an AC coupled battery solution, you might have a situation if the maximum is five. Um, if you're producing a maximum power, then the maximum you can ever push down this line is five. If you have a single phase home, you have quite high loads during the daytime when the solar is producing. Let's just say, for instance, you have four kilowatt of load in the home. At that point in time, you only have one spare kilowatt worth of power to charge your AC coupled battery. The problem with that is, is batteries vary in size. Some of them, you know, you might say an average is say 10 kilowatt hours. Um, or, 10, or uh, 10 kilowatts of energy that's required to charge this battery. And if most of the energy is being used up by the home, you're not actually gonna have sufficient energy to charge the battery. Um, sort of sufficient, sort of surplus energy, or the crumbs, as some might say, left to charge the battery. So you might have all the best intentions to buy a solar system today and get a battery tomorrow, but if you're single phase, and again, if you have high loads, regardless of your best intention, um, you can put this battery on there, but it's not going to charge, which is a bad investment. Um, so it's really important to be considerate of, in particular, the household loads and how they, how they may change as well. Um, the habits you have today may not be the habits of tomorrow, particularly as the grid becomes more electrified, things are moving away from gas in particular, electric vehicles, um, these sorts of things as well. So um, just something to be considerate of. With a DC couple battery, a little bit of a workaround with this because what a DC couple battery can do or with this is the language of where the hybrid comes into effect is that um, you can have a five kilowatt hybrid inverter that can both send that power down the AC line so it has a five kilowatt AC capacity but given that it's a hybrid it can also charge on the DC at the same time so to use round figures you might have a battery that can charge at say 2.5 as well so you can essentially have your cake and eat it too, where you have five kilowatts coming into the home and, and the, the home can use that power, but you can also have power going um, into the battery cell. Now, Western Power views these types of systems differently. And what you're actually allowed to do, which is really the kicker, is typically with a solar system, a lot of people um, say to me that they want a 6.5 kilowatt system. That seems to be quite common. Um, a lot of that is driven around the five kilowatt inverter size and the maximum panels you can put on a five kilowatt inverter is 6.6. .6. Very, very common out there. Um, that's all well and good. 
with a hybrid type system, what you're actually allowed to do, and this is different, this is more around STC calculation, again, perhaps another video, is that you're actually allowed to um, install more than six kilowatts of 6.6 .6 kilowatts worth of panels on a five inverter, if it is a hybrid and has this DC charging capability. So we've had instances where you can install up to seven, eight, nine, 10, even more um, kilowatts worth of power onto this system right here. So what we would essentially be doing then is loading, say more panels onto here. Maybe there's another string or however it works, depending on the, on the uh, type of inverter and such. And you could potentially have up to say, um, yeah, seven in this example, 7.5 kilowatts worth of power with five going to the home, 2.5 going to the battery itself. Um, of course, when the panels start to go to sleep in the afternoons, then the energy that's been stored in the battery during the day will ultimately then trickle feed out to the home um, in the evenings. Um, the idea behind this, of course, is reducing the energy that you're ultimately having to pay for, reducing your reliance on the grid as well. So, um, as you can see, this is really just sort of scratching the surface. There's a lot of other considerations within, uh, within this, um, both around the, um, your home in itself, do you have a, a single phase, three phase? What are the limitations of your roof around system sizing? You know, which, what class of panel is gonna work best for you? Is it 300, 350, 400? Um, and then of course within that, which battery technology is gonna work best? So for a lot of homes, AC couple is absolutely fantastic and that's a great result and it's really good companies out there making these products and that works incredibly well. For some households, the DC solution is best, um, just purely to do with a lot of different um, factors and perhaps this being the largest one that on single phase, your maximum allowable capacity is five kilowatts. So if you wanna learn more about these topics, if you want to understand more about how your home fits within this um, sort of program, then the best thing for you to do would just be to reach out to us here at Infinite Energy, speak to one of our um, energy consultants who are very experienced, very transparent, and it's our role just to educate you as best we can on this information, give you all the tools you need in order to make the best decision, because ultimately, as you can probably become aware, the decisions you make today around buying a solar system um, integrating a battery into that solar system down the track um, is not always cut and dry. So it's important that for us as an organization that we be transparent with our clients, um, give them the information to make the best decisions and ultimately we want a client for life. So we want to make sure that the solar system you're investing in today is best suited for battery integration tomorrow. So thank you so much. You can call us directly on 1300 074 669. Thanks.